UFC 302, we have a stacked pay-per-view headlined, of course, by the lightweight championship. Islam Makashev looking to defend his title against what could be Dustin Poirier's final fight. This is a great card. Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa. Kevin Holland versus Ola Zaychuk. Almeida, Romanov, Randy Brown, Eliza Zaleski. I mean, even Coppola versus Almeida on the prelims. It's going to be a great card. Um, I'm going to be giving a breakdown for every single fight on the card um, and giving my betting perspective and as as well as giving the bets I already have locked in as well as ones that I haven't locked in quite yet, but I'm still looking at. So let me know in the comments your favorite bets on the card and make sure you click the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. Let's start off at the bottom. First fight of the night. We got Andre Lima taking on Mitch Raposo. Mitch Raposo is actually the third opponent for Andre Lima. Um, two opponents have had to pull out. I was really looking forward to pronouncing uh, the opponent before his name. Um, not really, so I'm kind of happy about that. But Mitch Raposo, some of you might remember him from The Ultimate Fighter. This is going to be his official UFC debut. Um, he did. He was at Cage Tie-Ins and uh, CAES, Combat Zone. So, I mean... Not the worst competition, but obviously this is a step up. Andre Lima, you saw in the Igor Severino fight. Um, I actually had a bet on Igor. First time I've lost a bet via a bite. Um, and I thought Igor was winning the fight, but I got to say, Andre Lima did have his moments. He hurt Igor several times. Definitely has power. His striking is very slick. Um, I think he is going to be the, the better striker here. Mitch Raposo, pretty well-rounded, though. Um, good everywhere. I think he could potentially get takedowns, um, but it, the short notice does worry me. I do think Andre Lima should be the favorite. Um, I think this fight's probably going to play out mostly on the feet, um, and it's tough to see. You know, I'm sure Raposo, he's a professional. You know, he's only 25 years old. I'm sure, you know, being already in the area, he's staying ready, but, um, you know, it's definitely something to think about the short notice. Um, it's, you know, he's taking it on like a week and a half, maybe, maybe like a week notice. So, uh, you know, it's definitely something to keep in mind, especially if you want him to grapple because the most tiring part of a fight is the offensive wrestling. So I am going to go with Andre Lima, but I don't know if I really want to lay the two to one, um, even beyond two to one at this point. So, um, you know, the pick is Lima. I'm going to pick him. I'm going to say TKO. Uh, it could be a decision though. I'm gonna TKO or decision. It's close. If Raposo comes in shape, you know he could. I was looking at uh one bet I do like on this. I saw the uh, I even though I might be leaning towards the TKO, I like the Raposo plus three point five. It's minus one ten. Um, you know I think there's a really good chance that if if Aunt Lima doesn't get uh the finish, it could be a pretty competitive decision. So I'm I'm on the fence about playing that. Um. Because I do think the decision's really live. I'm, it's really like 50-50 for me, but um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay off of it for now. But I am looking at that as if I bet it, it's probably gonna be Raposo plus 3.5 because I do think a competitive decision is live. And you know what? Matter of fact, I'm gonna take Lima by decision. I, I'm not gonna. I don't think Raposo gets finished here. The the, the finish is is live, but I'm gonna say uh, Andre Lima by decision, and a potential Raposo uh, plus 3.5. Next up, we got Jocelyn Edwards taking on Eileen Perez. Um, I, I, let, let's just get it out of the way. Yes, uh, Eileen Perez is the the twerk girl. It's just all anybody's talking about on on freaking Twitter. But uh, you know, um, she's pretty good. I mean, she's a pretty big favorite here. Um, I understand why. You know, she's going in and all of her fights getting these takedowns. And honestly, I know everybody's all, all the only fans fade yada yada. But um, you know, she's been pretty good. You know. Um, Obviously, you know, hasn't fought the greatest of competition, but, you know, at the same time, neither has Jocelyn Edwards, and, you know, at least Perez is going in there, she's getting takedowns, and, um, you know, that's something we've seen Jocelyn Edwards struggle with, you know, um, the takedown defense has not been great, one thing I will say, though, she, she's a big, strong girl, um, and she's still young, you gotta think she's working on the wrestling, training at a pretty good gym at King's MMA, um, you gotta think, you know, good grapplers in there. You gotta think that they're, um, you know, working on that takedown defense. And on the feet, I do think this is a really close fight. I would actually lean the Jocelyn Edwards side. So, um, you know, um, I do think. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to blind you. Um, that you know, it could it could be a little little dicey here. I wanted to turn this off because uh, so I can see the wins and losses. But uh, yeah, um, I I think the you know. 
Perez being this big of a favorite is a little dicey, but I do think the takedowns are going to be there. You know, the ground and pound finish could, you know, uh, both these girls have been in a lot of decisions, so the over is super chalky, um, which I understand. But I think, you know, there could be sneaky finish upside on if Eileen does get the takedowns. Um, the ground and pound is going to be there. And if, if she can't, you know, Jocelyn Edwards has some power in her shots. We haven't really seen it play out yet, but I, I, I could see Edwards finishing, you know, uh, at some point, um, you know, this could be the fight where she could, you know, find a finish on the feet. Uh, I think it could be a finish could be live. So, you know, potential um, under just because the over is so it's like minus, you know, 400 or something. Um, and I think there could be a finish on, you know, a potential finish on either side. So the pick is going to be Perez. I'm going to pick Perez by decision, but, um, you know, not something I'm looking to play. These early prelims are pretty sketchy. And speaking of sketchy, we got Mickey Gall taking on Basil, Basil Hafez. And uh, Hafez, most people know for that JDM fight. Um, you know, it was a close fight. A lot of people thought he won. But that was his debut. He was supposed to get smoked. Um, came in as a big underdog and looked great. You know, um, grappled JDM well. Uh, we have seen that's a hole for JDM. But, you know, still, you know, the Anthony Ivey wins, not terrible. And when you go through Mickey Gall's wins... It's not like he has the best wins, you know. They kind of brought him in to give CM Punk a winnable fight. Um, then he beat Sage Northcutt, who, let's be honest, was a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a flop. Randy Brown, that's a tough flop. I mean, that's a tough opponent. George Sullivan. His wins are George Sullivan, Ol' Salim, uh, and Jor- Jordan Williams. So, you know, three guys um, not UFC level. Every opponent he's ever fought that's been UFC level has beat him. The only thing is, is Hafez UFC level or did he just overperform against JDM? And that's the question, you know. Um, I do think Hafez should have the wrestling advantage. I think neither of these guys have great striking. Hafez is going to have a power advantage, but, you know, neither guy has great striking, especially in their defense. Both guys are very hittable. But I think Hafez, his power on the feet should, you know, give him some advantages. And I do think he has the wrestling advantage. So I understand why he is the favorite. But, you know... And the activity, too. Like, you know, Gall, he's, he hasn't fought in two years. Um, but when he's fought, he hasn't looked great. I mean, 7-5, and five, again, you know, if Hafez is USC level, he should beat Gall. And he is going to be the guy on top. So I do think he should be the favorite. But, you know, I did see Gall by sub, which is his win condition. Hafez is a good grappler, so, you know, I don't think it happens. But Gall by sub, plus 550, if you think he has a chance, you know, it's really, do you really think he's going to win a decision or knock Hafez out? I mean, I don't. So, you know, goal by sub, not the craziest thing. I mean, maybe the KO is so outrageous you could get something stupid and it maybe ground and pounds him. But, you know, overall, I think it's a stay away. Maybe a crazy little prop like that on goal because do I really think Hafez should be crazy favorite? No, but... He's got the you know power on the feet, and the striking is not great on either side. And then he's got the wrestling, which should make it to where he can get on top, where he'll have advantages. So give me Hafez. I'll take Hafez by TKO. But um, you know those gall props might be juicy enough. Next up, we got Nico Price taking on Alex Morono. This is going to be the first bet I have on the fight uh, or on the card. Um, Nico Price, you know, these two actually fought, and Nico Price coming in as a decent underdog, and he actually won the first fight via finish. He did knock out Alex Bar- uh, Morono, but it has been a while. Um, that was like eight years ago. It was like 2017 or something. When was it? Um, yeah, it was 2017. And I mean, since then, it's been a rough run for Nico Price. You know, I'm a fan of this guy. He's got big power, knocked out James Vick with an upkick, knocked out Tim Means. Um, he. You know, got my boy Randy Brown. Uh, that one broke my heart. It's a little fluky, but he's got that unorthodox style with unorthodox power. He has power in weird positions. So, you know, he is always live for a KO, and that, that's kind of what happened. Alex Morono hurt him early, and Nico Price was able to, you know, finish him at the end of the second. Um, Nico pretty much is finisher bust for me. You know, I was looking maybe that you sprinkled the KO because I really don't see him winning any other way. But I actually bet Morono when he was minus, uh, he's actually minus 222 right now, I think on Bet Online. So I bet him earlier. Um, parlayed him up with something uh, later on in the card. Um, I just think he's, I, I just, I hate to say it, but I think Nico. His time in this at this level of competition, you know, is Morono somebody I'd like to bet at two to two to one often? No, but I truly think, and especially coming off a guy he lost to, but 
you know, Morono has been so much more active. Nico Price's durability has not looked great. He's been finished so many times. I think Morono is the more technical guy everywhere. And when Nico Price is really his only chance to win is by finish, yet I think Morono can finish him. I truly think Morono should be like three to one. So um, I think he is on some books now. Um, so, you know, give me, actually not not quite, but you know, it could get there. Um, yeah, I bet him minus 222. Parlayed him up. Uh, the, the second leg of that parlay I'll talk about in a bit, but I just think Morono gets it done. I'm going to say Morono, TKO. I'm going to say second round. Next up, we got Phil Rowe taking on Jake Matthews. Um, yeah, I mean, um, this is an interesting fight. Um, one where I do, you know, Jake Matthews, pretty well-rounded guy. He's just been so inconsistent. Um, you know, you got times where he comes in against Darius Flowers. He looks great. Against Andre Fialo, he looks great. But then he's losing to Matthew Simmelsberger. Decision. You know, Michael Morales, okay, that was, you know, that's a good fighter. Sean Brady, that's a good fighter. You know, I'll give him a little bit of a pass there. Even Anthony Rocco Martin, you know, not a terrible loss. And the Andrew Holbrook loss, that, that's terrible. Um, but, I mean, typically, you know, when he gets these step downs, he wins. And Phil Rowe, thing about him is he's not a huge minute winner. Um, you know, he really is a finisher. You know, I mean, um, he has zero wins by decision. So, you know, typically, you know, he's, he's losing fights. And he can, over you know, overwhelm them late. He's got a good gas tank, good submissions. You know, he's always, you know, he's big in the jiu-jitsu scene. Um, you know, uh, good jiu-jitsu, good finishing ability on the feet, and good cardio. So, you know, Jake Matthews tends to have pretty solid cardio too, but uh, I do think later on Phil Rowe can, can take over. Um, if it goes to decision, you got to lean Jake Matthews to make sense some takedowns. Phil Rowe does tend to accept bottom a little bit. Um, so, you know, could see that. But I do think on the feet, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Phil Rowe could catch him. Um, and on the ground, you know, Phil Rowe's sneaky. He's got good jujitsu. I really do think if there's a finish, it's going to be Phil Rowe. So what I did is I um, I went ahead and bet Phil Rowe uh, the finish only prop at plus one ten. Um, that's still there on Bet Online. Um, I think uh, you know if there's a finish, it's going to be on the Rowe side. Simple enough. Um, plus money when I think you know I really don't really see Jake finishing him. He's more of a decision guy. Um, you know maybe he could ground and pound him. Um, but I don't really see that, um, and I don't think he'll get submitted. You know, Phil Rowe, he, he's got really good jujitsu. Um, you know, I know he's training hard, follow each other on Instagram, so, you know, I stay pretty up, up to date with him. Um, I think Phil Rowe's got a good shot. I'm actually going to pick Phil Rowe. He's going to be my first underdog so far on the card. There's, there's a little bit of a chalky card, but, um, you know, he is the fa- underdog I give the biggest shot to, but my way of betting it was the finish only because – He's just not a minute winner, and I think he will probably spend some time on his back. So give me Phil Rowe to win, but let me bet him plus 110 on the inside the distance only, and uh, let's move on. Next up, we got Grant Dawson taking on Joe Selecki. This is like the Spider-Man meme, like them looking at each other as like the same guy. Um, I mean, not entirely. Grant Dawson, better wrestling, probably better cardio. Even though he's the bigger guy, Joe Selecki tends to tends to slow down as the fight goes on. Um, he's probably got the better jujitsu, Grant Dawson, the better um, power, the better wrestling, um, and the better cardio. So I do understand why he's a big favorite. Um, you know, I really don't see, despite, I mean, other than like maybe Selecki catch him in a sub, maybe Dawson makes a big mistake and gives up his back. That's what Selecki wants to do. Um, Selecki obviously coming off getting knocked out by via slam by close. Uh, I bet close on that, so that was beautiful. Um, you know, I do think Dawson should be a big favorite, but I do think the line's about a- accurate. Um, you know, I think on the feet, it's pretty competitive. Um, neither have the best striking, and both can be hittable. But, you know, I don't think, uh, you know, Selecki's going to knock him out. I think if Selecki, Selecki's got to catch us up. So I don't, I don't hate people parlaying Dawson. It's just, I prefer, you know, I really think the fight probably goes to the decision. I was, I'm, I'm, Tempted, I saw um, Dawson by KO is plus 525. Selecki's sub is plus 750. But I honestly, you could even do Dawson round three because he does pull off some of these late finishes, plus 900 on the uh, round three. But overall, I think the fight goes to the decision. Um, so what I went ahead and did is I 
bet the fight goes to decision, parlayed up with Alex Morono. The, the fight to go to decision was minus 175. Morono, like I said, minus 222. That gave me plus 128 on the on that two prop uh, parlay or two um, leg parlay. Um, I like that parlay. I really think it cashes. I think this fight goes to decision. If there, I might sprinkle a little hedge on like, I think my favorite out of those three props I mentioned, mentioned would be Dawson by KO. I really don't see Selecki catching him in a sub. I think he's going to be on his back. I mean, do I want to bet plus 750 on the off chance he gets to Dawson's back? I don't see him getting an arm bar off his back. I, th- I think he, I think he needs to take Dawson's back to win. And I just don't really see that happening. Um, I mean, yeah, Dawson is coming off a bad knockout, but he's taking a lot of time. He's young. He, you know, I think he just, he got caught. Bobby Green has an unorthodox style, pretty sneaky power sometimes. So, you know, I think Dawson's going to get it done. I'm going to pick Grant Dawson to win by decision, and let's move on to the next fight. Next up, we got Roman Kabalov, Cesar Almeida. This is going to be a fun one, man. I'm pretty excited for this fight. Um... You know, two strikers, two guys that want to strike. Roman Kopilov coming off the the Anthony Hernandez uh, loss, fluffy, but he looked good early. You know, he his striking is clean, and eventually Hernandez did what he does, and he takes over his cardio, his wrestling. Um, he's just, you know, he's grimy, he's a grinder, and he got to Kopilov's back and choked him. But Kopilov won't have to worry about the takedowns here. It's definitely going to be two strikers. Almeida, only five fights pro, but... Lots of kickboxing experience. Everybody's talking about, of course, he did have a couple of fights with Alex Pereira. Um, lost via decision, but um, stuck in there. He's never been finished. Um, both these guys are very durable, great chins. Um, Kabalov does work the body well, and I do think his striking is good. I definitely, you know, think it's a close fight. But uh, I went ahead early on in the week and played Almeida plus 130. I just think that this fight is going to play out on the feet. I don't think Kopilov's going to shoot takedowns. Will he have a grappling advantage if it goes there? Yes, but I don't think, you know, I mean, we saw Almeida, you know, as Budka, he's very green, of course, but, you know, he was a jacked young dude with, you know, that was going all out, you know, make or break for that takedown. And Almeida defended well. Even when he was drugged down, he was able to, you know, use the cage, get up, you know, um, just defend really well, gas Budka out. You know, I don't think Kapalov is going to come in there and do a lot of wrestling. I think these guys are going to strike. I think the fight, um, you know, I, I think Almeida should be a slight favorite because of that. I too totally understand why he's not. Five fights, everybody's like, eh, he's a little older for a guy with five fights. Kapalov, much more proven. You know, he's been looking great on the feet. It's just, yeah, I mean, he lost to a style that's completely different. So you can kind of forgive him for that. Um, obviously, it's compl- styles make fights, and this is a completely different matchup, so I'm not weighing that into this fight. It's pretty much as cut, as dry, cut and dry as, as two high-level strikers. I think Almeida is the overall better kickboxer, and I think they're going to have a kickboxing fight, and is plus 130. It's like plus 115 now, so, you know, um, still think there's a little tiny bit of value there. It's not like I think he should be a big favorite, but I think like minus 120 for Almeida would be fair. Again, totally understand why he's not. I just believe because I don't think Kabbalah is going to grapple. I think Almeida is the overall better striker, and I still think he's young enough, especially at middleweight. I, I think he hasn't taken enough too much damage. I think he's got enough in the tank to to get a couple more wins. I think he will when he fights a good wrestler. Um, you know that can strike enough with him. Uh, he'll have trouble, but I don't think that's going to be this. So give me Caesar Almeida. I'm going to say he wins by decision. Um, there could be a finish. Both guys are live for the finish, but I'm going to say Almeida gets it done by decision, just lands the better shots. Um, Kapilov is dangerous, though. I get it for sure. Um, but, yeah, give me Almeida. That's going to be my second underdog uh, on the card. And we will move on to the next fight. We got my boy. And, uh, you guys know I am biased here. It's my boy Randy Brown taking on Eliza Zaleski Dos Santos. I have always been a Zaleski fan, but, uh, you know, Randy Brown... You know, obviously, just cool ass dude. Um, one of the homies, just super relatable, awesome dude. Um, so I try to set that aside. You know, he has won me a lot of money in the past. So it's always nothing's better than you know when your friends make you money. Um, but Randy Brown's a really talented guy, man. I've been a fan for a long time. Um, you know, but I, I like I said, I've been a fan of Zaleski. He's a dangerous guy. He's good everywhere. Good jujitsu. You know, he actually has a knockout win over Sean Strickland. Uh, uh, you know, the 
former 185 champion. You know, Luigi Vandermini, Curtis Millinder, those aren't the worst wins. Decent enough. You know, did lose that split to Muslim Salakov, but I actually thought he won that. Um, Benoit Saint Denis, that that was BSD up a weight class, but you remember he put an absolute beating. That should have been a finish multiple times. Uh, beat Abubakar Nurmagomedov. You know, that's a good win. Had a draw against Hanat Fakhrutinov. So, you know, this dude's really good. You know, Hanat is no joke. So to take him to a draw is very impressive. And this is going to be a tough fight for sure for Brown. Um, and I do think, you know, um, you know, I'm not counting Zaleski. It's not, I would never, I'd never underestimate him. But I do think this is a tough matchup for him because, you know, Zaleski does like to put pressure on people. Um, I don't think he's really doing a lot of wrestling at this point of his career. Um, and, and if he does, you know, Randy Brown's, you know, he knows how to use his length for opportunistic subs. He could definitely snatch Zaleski's neck. Um, he's got good jujitsu, and, and on the feet, you know, he's obviously going to have a length and reach advantage, and he uses that very well. You saw in his last fight, absolutely sniping Salikov. Um, you know, uh, Randy Brown's dangerous, man, um, and I think he could pick Zaleski apart. You know, he's fought high-level competition, and, you know, really only lost to the top guys, you know, JDM, Vincente, you know, that crazy loss to Nico Price, but, you know, I, I honestly think if those guys fight 10 times, Randy wins eight eight of them at least but uh you know uh Zaleski's always dangerous so you can't really count him out but I did bet Randy Brown minus 155 again if you want to stay off this because you say I'm biased go for it but you know I think I've bet Randy Brown very well over his career um I just think he's the better fighter you know I I, I do like Zaleski a lot um, and it's not really just that I think he's a better fighter I just stylistically I think Zaleski's going to be walking into shots uh, I think Brown can keep him at range. Zaleski has power, and he's got a lot of sneak, you know, tricks up his sleeve. So maybe he could catch Brown with something big. I think, you know, if he wins, it has to be by knockout. I really don't see him like winning any other way. I don't really think. I mean, you know, Zaleski got good jujitsu, but I really don't see him submitting him. I think he's got to catch him, maybe like a head kick or something. Um, if he doesn't catch Randy Brown, I think he loses. So you know, if you're if you're taking Zaleski, I think you got to take a you know. To catch Randy, I, re I really think Randy's going to be the minute winner here. So give me Randy. Uh, I really I could see all three methods of victory for Randy. So I just took him straight minus 155. I think it's still there on Bet Online. Um, I like that line. So um, I'll take Randy. I'm going to take him by TKL. I'm going to take him by TK. No, you know what? I'm going to take him by decision. But I could see a TKO happening. Next up, we got Jailton Almeida taking out Alexander Romanov. Um, first off, let me take a little rip. For my boy Randy, rude boy Brown, war Randy. Let's get it done, baby. If you don't already, go follow him on Twitch, on Instagram, Touch One Seventy, Touch and Go One Seventy. Check out his merch. Dude's doing big things. I mean, he's a cool ass dude. But next up, we got Jailton Almeida taking on Alexander Romanov, and uh, you know this is a fun fight. Two grapplers. Um, man, Romanov, this guy had all the hype, but <coughs> you just never know which Romanov's going to show up. You know, sometimes he shows up in great shape. Other times he comes up in like a blob. You know, Ivanov just doesn't really make you work, so it's hard to take a lot from that. And that was almost a year ago. And then I thought, you know, he's been away for almost a year. Maybe he's going to come in in great shape, but I don't know. Like, I'm seeing these Instagram pictures, and I'm like, dude, he's looking even worse. He's looking fat. You know, the Volkov, the Tiber, I was looking to fade this guy. You know, I knew the gas tank was bad. I bet Ty Burr in that fight. And, you know, as a big underdog, I think Ty Burr was like plus 300, plus 400. He might have even been like plus, yeah, he might have been. I think he was like plus 400, plus 350 at least. And I bet him there, cashed. Um, you know, I think, you know, both these guys don't have the best gas tank, but I think Rowan Oz is a little worse. And I think Almeida is the better grappler. I think both these guys have good wrestling, but, you know, Romanov. I just think on his back he's going to be lost and I think Almeida you know in the scrambles just have the better jujitsu the better overall grappling I think he can outlast Romanov I just I don't know man after after Romanov took that first loss I, I think he was a little bit mentally broke uh, I mean obviously got that win in his last one but I don't know it wasn't the most impressive win and Ivanov just I don't know he's tough but that's about it at this point of his career he's so slow and unathletic and just he's really just tough Almeida, a tough loss. You know, I bet Curtis Blades against them. Um, but, you know, that he was looking good. And, you know, just you, 
got to protect it's heavyweight you can't just glue yourself to a leg and you know you let a 265 pound giant like blades elbow your head like that like your brain can't like your brain's getting bounced around so you know you live and learn i think almeida's i mean he's a freak athlete i think he's just a better guy here so i don't like the line am i trying to parlay jail 10 you know after what we just saw against a guy like Romanov, who is super dangerous, no. But I do think this is a good step out, um, you know, a bounce back fight for for Jailton here. Um, I was thinking, you know, I was seeing Jailton by or, or decision plus four fifteen. Obviously, both these guys don't go to decision often, but you know, if it goes to decision, I think Jailton will have you know take over late, and I could see you know if it goes, I really do think uh you know he'll take it. The Roman by decision was plus seven hundred. If you think he has a shot, you know that's. Or even just fight goes to the decision plus 250. You know, um, not terrible. You know, something to think about. But I think overall, um, probably just going to be a stay away for me. Maybe I take a little sprinkle on on some sort of like fight goes to the decision or, you know, jail 10 decision or something. <coughs> but, I, you know, overall, I just, I don't want to bet Romanov, especially seeing what I'm seeing, you know, the shape he's in. But just not trying to lay a 3-1 to one on Almeida. You know, just never really, nah, I'm good on, on betting the him at this odds against a, you know Romanov is dangerous and you know if he gets on top of him it definitely could get sketchy but I'm gonna take jails and I'm gonna say he wins the fight by submission um it, it could go so it is a crazy fight but we're gonna move on um we got Kevin Holland taking on Mikael Alizechuk um Holland back up at 185 and I'm not gonna lie I don't really love that you know um Obviously, just got beat up bad against MVP, and maybe he's just trying to, you know, wipe that taste from his mouth. Um, but I don't love that, you know. All his Achuk, a former 205er, he was outsized at 205, but you know, uh, Kevin Holland, he's just not 185er. I mean, he's just not. Yes, he's 6'3, so people on will look on paper and be like, "What do you mean he's 6'3 with an 81 inch reach?" Yeah, I mean, he's just all his Achuk's going to be the the overall bigger man, and I will say, all his Achuk comes forward which, you know, um, could be good, could be bad, because a guy like Holland, he wants to snipe. So typically he wants you to come forward if you're not going to wrestle because it's going to set up his counters with that 81-inch reach. He's going to set up, you know, his big old sniper shots. And, you know, that's definitely the way I think this is most likely that this is going to happen. Ola Zaychuk has one way to fight. You know, he's a boxer. He, he hunts the body. He comes forward and looks for, you know, to get in the pocket and exchange with you. And, you know, I think that could be... You know, he is going to be the bigger guy, so it does kind of sketch me out in the, in the short notice and how Holland looked in his last fight. But this is a totally different stylistic matchup, um, and I do think he should be the favorite. I do think, you know, um, Ola Zaychuk is live because, you know, he could end up just being like bullying Holland, you know, if he can rip his body and get into the pocket. But, you know, overall, I think that style is going to work against him. I think he's going to walk into a shot. He could have some success, but I think at some point he's going to either get sniped or rocked, sniped, rocked, and subbed. So I'm going to pick Kevin Holland, club and sub. Um, I'm looking at inside the distance, plus 100. At the same time, that line's only getting wider. So, I mean, if you get Ola Zaychuk at, like, plus 250, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, Holland, you know, double-digit losses, really bad fight IQ, undersized 185, or you could make a case. And if you're given plus 250, you know, I think you'd have to be crazy to bet Holland at like three to one at a division where he's too small against the guy who's you know coming down or you know former was up up two divisions higher than what Holland should be fighting at. So you know, um, I think Holland wins. I think he club and subs him. I'm gonna say second round. Uh, I'm gonna say you know front choke after he rocks him. We go into the co-main event, man. This is a five-round fight. <clears throat> Don't forget that. And I do think that's very important. We got Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa. Um, yeah, I think that five rounds really does make a difference because in three rounds, you got to say, I mean, Paulo Costa, typically a decent gas tank for somebody as muscle-bound as he is because you got I mean, you think these guys are both like the same height. So look at all that extra muscle that Costa carries. I mean, maybe Strickland's half an inch taller. Um but I honestly think that they're about the same height. And, yeah, I don't think he's tall. I think they're the exact same height, bit pretty much. And Costa is definitely, I mean, you know, he cuts a solid, you know, 40 pounds. Or, you know, over, like, you know, uh, 
not like all the sweated out, but you know, he probably diets off a solid like 20 pounds and then sweats out another 20. I mean, you know, huge weight cut. Um, Sean Strickland's not a huge 185er, you know, former 170er. And Costa, you know, I know I've, I was having somebody tell me, oh, Costa doesn't have any power. Strickland might hit him hit harder. I'm like, dude, you're crazy. Like, I love Strickland, but I mean, I, I love both these guys. I, ha- I have both these guys as merch, actually. I'm a fan of both, but. You know, Costa has power just because guys don't get a ton of knockouts. Like, and you know, typically he gets it done with his volume and most of his powers with his kicks. But you know, you're crazy to think that Costa's not hitting hard just because he's not materializing in knockouts all the time. But you know, both these guys are fighting tough competition. You know, um, obviously Strickland's been getting, you know, he's been look getting more wins, but at the same time, you know, you know Costa. He's fought, you know, both these guys are fighting nothing but killers, you know. His losses, you know, Robert Whittaker, Marvin Vittori, Izzy. You know, it's like, those are not bad losses. And then Strickland, you know, the the controversial decision against DDP, controversial decision to Jared Cannonier, and then he got knocked out by Alex Pereira. Those are both these guys' three losses, you know, anytime recently. Obviously, he did get knocked out by Zaleski, who we were talking about earlier, and, you know, lost to Usman and Ponzinibbio by decision a long time ago, but... Both these guys, really high level guys. If it was three rounds, I would lean more towards, you know, I'd probably be taking a dog shot on Costa. But I think this is probably going to be a stay away for me. No, I think the line's pretty accurate. I think Strickland should be a, the favorite with it being five rounds. <clears throat> the big thing for me is, you know, the thing that scares me for Strickland um, is both these guys want to come forward. But it's going to be hard early on to come forward on Costa. Even if you are one of the guys who don't think Costa has a ton of power, which I think you're a little bit off on that, um, he is early on just going to have a strength and a size and still, come on, a little bit of a power, a solid power advantage in my opinion, um, which is going to probably force Strickland to play. Um, maybe not completely off the back foot, but I don't think he's going to be able to walk Costa down early on. Now, maybe as the fight goes on, I think... Even though Costa's a decent gas tank, I think you know three, four, five Strickland should be able to start pushing the pace, even maybe towards the end of the second. But you know, early on, Costa's probably going to be on the front foot, and that's Strickland does not fight well going off the back foot. So I totally understand people taking dog shots for me. Um, I get it because you know early on is definitely going to be dangerous for Strickland. Costa coming forward and and you know Strickland backing up that is that's a recipe for disaster for Sean. But um, you know, overall, I am going to pick Strickland. I, I think he is going to get it done. But, um, you know, it's definitely close, and there's really not a lot of props I love. You know, um, nothing's really sticking out. So the pick's going to be Strickland. I'm going to take him to win by decision. Um, both guys have been pretty durable. Um, but, you know, maybe Costa catch them like Pereira did. But overall, I'm going to say this fight goes to the decision, um, and I'm going to say Strickland takes it. But, I, you know, both guys, I could see Strickland finishing late. I could see Costa finishing early. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say Strickland takes it via decision. We move on to the main event. If you made it this far, make sure you let me know in the comments your favorite bet on the card. Like the video, really appreciate it. Click that subscribe button because we got the lightweight title on on our hands here. We got Islam Makhachev taking on Dustin Poirier, and uh, yeah, man. I mean, I'm excited for this fight. I know since the beginning, since this fight got announced, um, everybody's just been saying, you know, it this is a squash match and. You know, Islam's going to just run over Dustin. And I get it, you know. You know, Dustin, when he's fought, you know, when he fought Oliveira, when he fought Khabib, um, we've seen, and even in other fights, we've seen Dustin give up his back. We've seen him get taken down. The takedown defense hasn't been, you know, great. But, you know, typically he's able to weather the storm. And I do think, you know, five rounds. Dustin Poirier, you know, he knows how to fight over five rounds. And he's got a ton of experience, man. And you can never underestimate experience islam has experience of himself at this point but you know if you're talking about high level opponents dustin has fought the who's who he's done it for 15 years um you know i grew up watching um what was it fightville is the one that he's in i mean i've seen all those documentaries but that was a really good one um if you haven't seen it go watch it right now if i'm mixing that up with a different fight documentary just look up dustin poirier documentary i think it's fightville that's the one he's in but really good doc he's just another guy he's a kid in the gym they had no idea he was going to be become who he was but yeah man you cannot underestimate dustin and i am getting this vibe that islam you know um 
I, of course, you gotta. I try not to look too much into pre-fight, you know, banter, but I do really um, think that Islam could be underestimating Dustin here, man. And you know, um, I get that, like, you know, on paper, yes, you know, the you know, Islam should be able to land takedowns, and then you gotta think, you know, Islam, his jujitsu is really, really high level. So don't tell me it's Sambo. His jujitsu is her. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, it's another conversation for another day. But. You know, at the end of the day, man, Dustin is a five-round fight. He's going to have advantages. And, you know, Dustin is a dog. And I know, you know, you never like to bet on guys who are throwing out the R word. He has been talking about retirement. Win or lose, um, you could really see him retiring here. I honestly think this probably will end up being his last fight. At least maybe he does some stupid fun crap later on like we're seeing everybody do. But as far as, like, you know... I could see him coming back for a money fight maybe later on in a couple of years. But, you know, this could be his last fight, like, as a contender and all that. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm trying – you try to take away – because Dustin is a one of my all-time favorites. He, and, you know, he's a lot of people's favorites. And you try to set that aside. But, um, you know, I truly do think that, you know – I mean, I bet him against BSD and everybody was counting him out. And, uh, you know – Obviously, I do think Islam's levels above Benoit Saint Denis, but you know Dustin's just a dog. He's the type that's always gonna fight for your money, and I do think you know, you know the fight. You know, you get Uncle Chael Sonnen always says it best. You know, the biggest upsets always happen when a guy when a fight becomes harder than a guy thinks it's gonna be. Like when you when you go in there thinking, oh, I'm just gonna take this guy down and take his back and submit him, easy, easy money and. All right, what's after that? Oh, next up, I'm going to go up to 170. I'm going to take Leon. Oh, I'm going to do this and that. I know it's cliche, but, like, seriously, you if you're going into a fight with that mentality, I'll tell you one thing, man. Even if he is talking about retirement, he was talking about retirement for the BSD fight. and did He he got taken down. He was in positions where he could have tucked and, and, and quit. He could have gave up the back. and get, he, was, he gave up his back two times. He could have got rear naked choked. He could have easily just, oh, whoopsie-daisy, or not even that. Just, you know what, like, He's under. He's grinding me out. I'm losing. Screw this. No, he showed that he's still got that dog. Do you really think he lost his dog in like six months? And this is where it could all culminate. You think he wants to go on never touching that bell? I don't think. I think he's given a hundred percent. So this is a rare occasion where I don't really worry too much about the R word getting thrown away, thrown around. I think you're getting a hundred percent Dustin. He will leave it all out there. And you know you got to think, man. Islam. Eh? If he's underestimating at all, and and even then, you know, even if he's not, you know, Alex stuffing, he stuffed a lot of takedowns, and Alex, you know, he does have that short, stocky build. He's got solid takedown defense for sure, but do you really think it's impossible that Dustin could stuff a couple takedowns? And if he does, or if Islam comes out here, he's, he's been making statements like him and his coach, oh, I, I think I could strike, outstrike him. I think, you know, I got better boxing, like, Dude, if you come out here, I, I don't think he will. I think he will wrestle. But if he really comes out here and tries to prove a point, I mean, dude, you don't want to get caught in the pocket with Dustin. He's a dog, and and he will take Islam's shot to 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 land his own. Man, honestly, you know, look, gun to my head, I'll be honest with you. I'd love to be some clickbait and lie to you guys and say I'm, my pick is Dustin. It's not gonna be Dustin. If gun, if there's a gun to my head. I take Islam by sub, rear naked choke. But at these odds, I mean, he's seven to one at this point. That I see Dustin right now plus five hundred. I'm gonna go ahead and let you know. And I really didn't think I was gonna when this fight first got announced. But I just—it's the biggest underdog Dustin's ever been in his career. And I just think the Khabib thing's baked into it. Islam is a fantastic fighter, and I honestly think he is pound for pound number one right now. But we have seen weaknesses. If you score the fight as a whole, if it's pride rules, if it's street rules, he lost that first Alex fight. The fight ended, he's on his back getting whooped on. Got dropped. Looking at the clock. Dustin's a dog. He's always live. And if you're giving me 5-1 to one odds, it's minus money to get Islam by sub. Dude, I just think this is... if you're Anytime you're going to give me five to one odds on Dustin Poirier like I'd, I'd take five to one odds for Dustin against anybody in the division so yeah I haven't bet it yet because the line's only gotten better and I mean my god are they gonna give me six to one are they gonna give me plus 550 I won't you know I don't want to get too greedy but 
I mean, it's looking like the line's only going to get wider. Everybody's just adding Islam to parlays. Like, we don't bet fighters, guys. We bet numbers. And at 5-1, to one, Dustin Poirier is the value. So, you know, I haven't bet it yet, but I will probably – I'm looking – it's about 90% I'll be some money on Dustin. Unless I were to wake up tomorrow morning and it drops all the way to 400, you know, um, I, I think Islam should be minus 300. Minus, yeah, I think he should be about minus three hundred. I, I would I would line Islam minus three hundred, but minus seven hundred is just that's just not right. Dustin does not have he has a solid chance to pull this off. Do I think he's gonna get the gilly? No. And you know what else? I was looking at um, Dustin by decision plus sixteen hundred. Of course, I think his most likely chance is to knock Islam out. We've seen Islam knocked out by lesser opponent now yes of course do i think that if he fought adriano martinez you know now or martins or even immediately after he wouldn't whoop him i do but you know shit happens it's a prime example is dustin not better than adriano martinez so is it has islam Islam improved of course but still that's just a prime example of if you're gonna give me five to one on a guy with serious knockout power who has fought the best of the best for 15 years and this is, he's going to be showing up fighting for his freaking life. Like, this is the biggest opportunity. He wants to go out with a bang so bad in front of his family. Like, if you're giving me 5-1, to one, man, I got I to gotta do it. So, haven't bet it yet, but Dustin Poirier will be getting some of my money. And I might even bet that sprinkle because also if it's a close decision, oh, man, if it's close, we're not in Abu Dhabi anymore. I think the UFC would be ready to... Even though then you, I don't know if I would say the UFC would, but the judges would be swayed. The UFC would probably be like, eh, Islam might not be the most exciting or active, but Dustin's probably about to retire. So maybe not the UFC, but I think the judges could be swayed if it's close also. Just something to think about. But that's going to be my picks, my bets. I'll run through my, my picks one time, and then I'll run through my bets. First, I got uh, the pick will be Islam, Islam by sub. But, you know, if you're betting it, it's Dustin. Um Sean Strickland by decision, Kevin Holland, sub, Jelton Almeida, sub, Randy Brown, decision, um, Cesar Almeida, decision, Grant Dawson, decision, uh, Phil Rowe, I'm going to say via sub, um, Alex Morono, I'm going to say TKO, um, Basil Hafez, I'm going to say TKO, uh, Eileen Perez, decision and Andre Lima decision uh, my bets that I've already locked in Almeida plus 130 on the money line row inside the distance only so finish only prop uh, decision equals no contest that's plus 110 we got Randy Brown minus 155 and Dawson versus Lecky goes the decision parlayed up with Alex Morono that parlay equals out to plus 128 some of my favorite bets that I haven't bet yet like I said Dustin most likely get my money plus 500 Dustin uh, by decision plus 1600 my lord get a little sprinkle most likely gonna be a knockout if he wins but decision um, you know 16 to 1 mm, interesting Raposo 3.5 that handicap minus 110 very interesting I also kind of like Holland inside the distance plus 100 you know if the Ola's H up gets too crazy though there could be value there uh, Gall sub plus 550 Dawson KO plus 525 Dawson round 3 plus 900 Jail 10 decision plus 415 uh, Those are kind of some other props that I'm looking at potentially plan But just the four locked in officially so far you will see me uh, Thursday for my quick picks and updated bets as the props continue to drop throughout the week it is still early so the, but that's where my head's at those are my picks those are my bets so far man i appreciate you guys let me know in the comments your favorite bet make sure you leave a like on the video and click the subscribe button really helps out the channel i've been going live on here a lot so come check it out talking mma playing ufc all that kind of stuff uh come through on there my li the link for all my twitch twitter all that stuff is going to be in the caption below i will catch you guys on thursday good luck make some smart bets